Go ahead when you're ready. Okay, I'll call the Michelle regular. Uh, is now okay. in the conference. Hey there. Hello. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Welcome. Welcome. <sighs> it's like deja vu, huh? All over again. Yeah. Having <laughs> more meetings now that uh, we can do it uh, <laughs> virtually, I guess, man. It's going to increase our, our, our load. <laughs> I guess so. Um, all right, well, I'll get it started. Call this uh, regular meeting of the Kingsburg City of Kingsburg Finance Committee uh, meeting to order. Uh, next on the agenda, any public comments? Yep, sounds like there's nobody from the public on right now. That was the background <laughs> music. <laughs> Lovely uh, old <laughs> music there. <laughs> <laughs> I see no. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. It's actually better than I've heard elsewhere. Uh, so, seeing no public comments, we'll move on to approval of the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I second it. Second. 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 Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, we'll move on to item 4, 2019-2020 Capital Improvement Plan update. Uh, yes, uh, Chairman Dix and members of the Finance Committee, um, as part of our um, you know, regular process as we start to ramp up here um, for the 2020-2021 budget, um, you know, like to do a review of where we're at as it relates to our capital improvement projects um, and just sort of um, get the um, get the thought process going um, for capital improvement projects that might be coming up uh, in the next budget year um, department heads uh, submitted um, their sort of their initial lists uh, late last week um, so usually the way that it works is that we um, they submit those and you know we kind of vet those as a staff and then we bring them back to this group and then ultimately the council for additional public and um, you know council input um, before sort of narrowing the list and ultimately finalizing it as part of the uh, budget approval so um, you have um, a list of the capital improvement projects uh, that were approved as part of the 2019-2020 budget uh, along with the status update, um, I'm just gonna kind of kind of go down in order. I, I, I'm not gonna go through every single one of them. Maybe just try and hit on a couple of highlights. But certainly, uh, if there are individual areas or items that I don't touch on or that you have additional questions on, um, I'm happy to expand on those as well. Um, so just starting at the top. Um, uh, we haven't uh, started uh, with any IT upgrade or our live stream capability as it relates to the council chambers. Uh, we were starting to have some of those conversations just before this started and now um, some of those um, requirements are, are, are changing. The, the main reason why we haven't done that is that we're just trying to figure out the best way um, to stream them so that um, you know an easy way to do it, uh, obviously we're, we're, we're offering a number of different ways during the teleconferencing, including Facebook Live, but um, if we're going to do some sort of live streaming, we have to have um, compatibility for everyone with the internet. So whether we're doing that through YouTube or you, know, you don't necessarily have to have a Facebook account um, to view it. So uh, that portion and then just also records retention, so making sure that we have a, a policy and process in place um, for storing all that video. Um, uh, we've uh, engaged uh, uh, Kingsburg Media Foundation to uh, uh, begin the work on the security cameras at City Hall, and he's doing that as part of uh, they're doing that as part of a, a larger project that I reported out to Council um, a couple weeks ago uh, that includes the um, um, that includes the police department. It's actually probably grown a little bit larger in scope. It's not the funds for this. Uh, aren't growing at all, but um, uh, the, the uh, Public Safety Committee um, 
has some desire to utilize some of the funding that was set aside for them to help expand um, some of the IT backbone infrastructure as well as potentially um, adding more cameras to a, a larger citywide infrastructure. And so um, really just working on laying the groundwork for all of our, um, all of our equipment uh, so that it can be, again, you know, those records can be stored properly and viewed, housed at the police department. Um, continue. Alex, how much are, how much is uh, the Media Foundation charging us for all of this? Um, the I'd have to check uh, each one of those. Um, there's different prices for each. So, like the City Hall project, I think is around fourteen hundred dollars. Um, the each project is a little bit different because of the scope. Uh, of that work, and so um, I could I could get that for the group. The reason why I'm asking is because um, we didn't go out for a bid on this, and I'm just wondering if we did go out on a bid to do everything, would it be cheaper, you know, partnering elsewhere too? Yeah, I usually uh, if the if the amount has been budgeted and it's less than 25,000 there's not necessarily a requirement to go out for bid um, we could certainly look at doing something like that there is some obviously continuity of service uh, based upon what media, the media foundation does for us currently their knowledge of our existing infrastructure uh, at the police department and they they usually are able to offer um, a pretty competitive rate from, from the labor side, so, but um, certainly if there's desire to uh, secure additional quotes, it's something we can look at. And I just know that um, prices have come down on a lot of different things, and I understand about the continuity and everything I do. I just, it wouldn't hurt to see if they're right in line with others are doing as well, that's all. Or sure. are we getting a better deal? Okay, we'll look into that. Um, uh, we have again budgeted funds for uh, the facade alley program. Um, so that's kind of a, a rolling application process. Um, there's three applications that are have been approved um, part of this fiscal year. Um, uh, Continuing our work with our municipal service review, which is um, one of the things that the LAFCO, uh, the Local Agency Formation Commission, uh, is asking individual communities to do. And then it's also a part of our examination of the of a potential uh, sphere of influence expansion. So they all sort of uh, fall in line with uh, both of those goals. Uh, we received a grant. Um, through Fresno Cog, through the transit, transient oriented development to do a parking study. So um, Dave Peters office uh, has been working on that for the last several months and anticipating getting a report to the city council in June. Um, there's the next handful are uh, road repair projects. So um, some of them uh, have been completed already. Uh, they were done sort of at the tail end of last summer still as part of this fiscal year and then there's uh, some of them that are scheduled um, for this construction season so those haven't occurred yet it will occur in spring and summer the tail end of, of this fiscal year um, a couple there's a couple of pedestrian projects on there so we've talked uh, at council level about the 18th Avenue sidewalk it's slated for spring had a conversation obviously about making sure that we reach out to those homeowners that's from uh, it's from Tulare to Stroud and then also uh, the extension of the recreational trail on Madsen Avenue uh, north of Stroud uh, up to um, Cam Avenue so we're working on uh, right-of-way acquisition on that project a uh, handful of Measure E um, uh, purchases have been made um, both by police and fire 
um, including obviously replacing all of our uh, squad or roughly nine squad cars, old squad cars to get us um, basically up to date with as many squads as we need. We received all the vehicles. They're in various stages of uh, either being painted or being upfitted. Um, and then uh, once they're completed, they get, they get rotated into service. Um, there's a couple, well, there's a project obviously that's not, that wasn't on here, uh, but because it came up sort of middle of the year, we, but that was the um, Crandall project. So that's been, um, the majority of that has been completed. There's a couple of minor punch list items. So we're really had a conversation with Dave Peters office today to really try and get um, the contractor to do, finish all that work right now because the pool is closed. And obviously when we do get back to a time when it's open, um, you know, people are going to be anxious to use it and we don't want to spend any of that time um, with the pool closed. So working on that. Um, we completed the work uh, at Athwall Park, obviously also as part of a, a grant um, through the healthcare district this year. Talked about that uh, several times at the council level. Um, purchased a couple of trucks uh, for public works, one through uh, the water fund, one through streets. Um, so one of those is through Measure E dollars, um, eligible funds um, through, uh, through that revenue stream. And then uh, the other one was through the, the water enterprise fund. Um, the CDBG project is the uh, solar project on the senior center and then also the replacement uh, of some flooring there. Call. Um, there's not a, a lot of uh, CWG eligible projects that we have based upon our demographics, but um, all senior projects are automatically eligible. So the council approved that project. That should take place this spring. And then there's uh, towards the bottom there, there are a handful of um, uh, pretty, pretty large uh, uh, items. We had, we had put um, sort of placeholders, uh, estimate amounts in there, uh, conservative estimates because it was it was prior to us going out to bid. Uh, last, you know, this was approved last June. We went out to bid um, after that, and so the numbers have actually uh, come in um, favorably compared to these. So say that they will be lower, but they're uh, all related to um, uh, the treatment required at wells 12 and 13. So um, all of our wells are required. Uh, to be, to be set up with chlorination equipment uh, as part of the treatment uh, the, of the two wells because we run a loop system. So they're working on, on that right now. If you've been up, if you've driven by wells 12 and 13, well, um, well 12 is actually on 18th Avenue, but um, we had to run because we, there wasn't enough space there in that island. Um, we're putting it in a location essentially across the street from the Sephardian Field from the baseball field on Avenue 396. Um, so they've started that work. Well, well 13 um, is north of Ace Hardware, uh, set, set back west of uh, 10th Avenue or Academy. Um, and so we were able to acquire some property on the backside um, or adjacent to our well there. Uh, and so that work is all underway and we're anticipating having all of that, um, those treatment facilities up and running this summer. Um, so we're obviously under a, a compliance order um, to treat those, um, but um, the majority of that, those funds are, are coming from settlement that we had with those individual companies. Um, so that's just a kind of a quick overview of some of the larger projects, but certainly if I skipped one or if there's questions on any of those, happy to answer. I don't really have any questions. I think uh, you know it's going to kind of hard to think about adding to this list or uh, you know with what's going on right now. So yeah, you know, just kind of sticking with what uh, has been planned thus far. I mean, a lot mo majority of the money is from sources that have to be used on these projects. Can't be used to offset maybe costs that would be associated with this impact. You know, impact of Coronavirus. Yeah, and I think those will obviously those will be parts of our discussion. You know, 
then over the next few months, once we see some of those things, you know, play out. So um, heard back a little bit today that the hotels are seeing um, between 50 and 60 percent um, occupancy drops right now, but they're anticipating higher. Yeah. But yeah, um, if there's no questions, then just really um, usually what we do is bring this to the council just uh, as part of our, our upcoming budget process so that everybody's on the same page and understands where we're at, um, kind of with the existing projects, and then we'll roll that into our, our, our discussions for the upcoming year. Have we gotten any information, maybe from League of Cities, about uh, any state or federal money that's going to be uh, opportunity either for public grant to us or private grants? I know there's some information out there about that, right? Some businesses. Yeah, there's some disaster relief assistance for businesses. Um, you know, now that the governor has activated gotten approval from the president for, for FEMA dollars, it's possible that we might be able to um, utilize that. Um, but yeah, right now, I, I'm not sure how much will be, if any, will necessarily be funneled through the city. It's just really trying to get those resources out for individuals and, you know, business owners that uh, might be impacted, you know, from a from a cost, from a standpoint, at least as we sit here today, the city doesn't have um, or hasn't incurred significant um, hard costs. So I think what will be, you know, what we'll have to quantify is the impact of, you know, uh, revenue loss and uh, the impact on our budget um, because of the effects of having businesses closed and, you know, if. You know, people aren't able to make property tax payments, and um, you know, obviously, TOT uh, revenues. And if, if building slows, um, you know, one thing obviously is that all construction projects are have been deemed essential um, by the governor. So, you know, just talking with Dave Peters today, he hasn't he hasn't really seen a slowdown um, on his end and on the projects that he has underway and. Uh, I guess the question will be whether new ones uh, continue to pop up and whether those sort of those, yeah, resi those residential ones continue. What will the pipeline look like in 90 days? Exactly. So. Yeah, I mean, the more we can do some type of do an ad hoc analysis internally, you know, he's saying, okay, well, what is it, 75% TOT? Over quarters two, three, and four look like you know exactly yeah maybe not so heavy in quarter four or whatever I mean there's going to be a double whammy on the sales tax because of the reduction in gas prices and the uh, you know just the lack of activity. So. Yeah. And um, as we mentioned yesterday, um, I, I, I'm expecting to get some uh, updated projections from a sales tax standpoint um, this week yet. So um, if I have those, I'll be able to share some of those, um, the, so at least some of the things that are non-confidential and usually the year-by-year -year, uh, forecasts are, are non-confidential and we can put those out and, and that'll be part of our Part of almost forecasting going forward. Okay. Michelle, do you have any questions or? No, I'm just listening. I think everything you guys are saying is right on. And I don't have any extra questions, but I agree that this the this forecast the next few months is going to be crazy to see what happens. And I think planning for that, at least having an idea of that's going to look like, is a good idea. No, definitely. Um, okay. So I think we're saying just kind of roll through with uh, or continue to roll this over as of now. 
Sounds good. Sounds good to me. So, item five, any other business? I know we kind of talked about forecast, maybe that'll be the other business, so speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we're gonna work on those. Um, hopefully try and, you know, some, some of the things will be, you know, will, will be estimates uh, just, just based upon what we're seeing over the last, you know, 14 days or so. You know, like we talked to some of the hotels today and they had some some 30 day bookings or some, some their next 30 days maybe weren't as bad because they had some existing bookings that they knew were going to be maintained. But um, beyond that is when, you know, and, and if there is a continued sort of slowdown and shutdown in air travel, um, you know, that impact on their, uh, on their business will be, um, will be significant. Okay. Anything else? Are we ready to adjourn? That's enough for me. I don't think that I have um, anything else at the moment. It's just something that you guys have questions on. But, um, well, thank you too for being down there and doing this and uh, responding so quickly to all the uh, changing requirements. <laughs> to operate within uh, the coronavirus environment. So, I know it's difficult, so I really appreciate it. Well, we appreciate that. All right, with that, I will adjourn. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Right, okay, bye, -bye. bye. Bye, guys.